if this resin printer here is as good as the one I was just testing, I really would like to test this one here. But we are not going to talk about the resin printers today. Today we will be looking at this FDM printer. Longer LK4X FDM 3D printer. And I really was impressed with all the bells and features that this printer has. 220 by 220 millimeter bed, up to 250 millimeter in height. And yes, the bed is PEI spring steel. The printer has a direct drive, which allows you also to print different materials such as PLA, ABS, TPU, and they say wood, but I didn't try that one. The printer has auto bed leveling, so you do not have to worry about the bed leveling. And among other things, stepper drivers are TMC2208. And those are known to be very quiet stepper drivers. So let's look how it ended up, what I was impressed, what things can be maybe better, and what are some of the mistakes I myself made while assembling the printer. We'll start in a couple of seconds. Let's start at the beginning by me receiving this printer for review. That means that I didn't spend any money to buy it, instead I received it to make a review of the printer. But it also means that I wasn't paid or am not getting paid for this review. So whatever you see or hear here is my opinion. And by the way, if you don't believe me, check the link up here, because we did unboxing, assembly and the first print on the stream. So you can see yourself how it performs on the first print. And also you can see how it took me something that usually should take 5 to 10 minutes, 1 hour. But we'll skip that one. Printer was packed really nicely. All the items necessary for the printing were included. All the bells, whistles, well not any bells or whistles, but all the cables, screws, special of course and a bit of the 3D filament. But I really would recommend that you go out and buy a full roll of the filament, because after you unbox it and start printing, you will never stop. All the tests that I did were printed with the e -Sans filament. Fire engine red. Bags with all the accessories, bolts, were nicely packed and also labeled, so it's easy to assemble. You just have to follow the assemble guide. And it's really short. I think that you need to bolt 12 or 14 bolts and that's it. I did make one mistake. And that was my mistake. Unfortunately, when I was tightening the eccentric nut on the Z-axis, I over tightened it. And that meant that not both sides were moving at the same time. Which resulted in some of the artifacts on the prints and I will show you them a little bit later. The rest of the assembly process was really easy. But let's talk about some of the bells and whistles of the printer. First of all, the mechanical leveling of the bed is done by really large knobs. And the springs are good. Not like Ender 3 Pro screws, where you had to replace them out of the box. These ones are really tight. In my case they were over tightened, so one of the first things I did was I loosened them up a bit, so I can make a manual adjustment of the bed. And manual adjustment is also very easy. The printer guides you through whole of the process. I think that there are 5 points that you have to adjust the bed at, and that's it. But besides that, printer has two additional sensors. One is the auto bed leveling sensor, which will help you to automatically level the bed. And what I like really much is that it also has the Z end stop that is the optical sensor. Which I must be honest, I haven't seen in that many printers so far. And those optical sensors should be more accurate and reliable than the standard switches. Next feature of the printer is direct drive extrusion. Direct drive extrusion means that you can print various materials. I did test this only with the PLA, but there is no reason for this not to work as advertised with the TPU2, which is something that I really should try with. And while we are already talking about the materials, the bed can be heated to up to 100 degrees, and the hot end maximum temperature is 250 degrees. 
So yes, it's even good for printing ABS. Printer also comes with a nice touch screen. It's very responsive and you can control everything from it. From the selection of the material type, setting up the temperatures, selecting what you want to print, through manual or automatic bed leveling. X and Y axis have belts. And there is a built-in belt tensioner, which is also a nice thing. More or less most of the today's printers have them, but it's really nice to see that Longer hasn't forgotten them here. After you have assembled everything, leveled the bed, you just need to insert the SD card, which is included in the box, and there are a couple of prints that you can start printing. But most important, if not the only important thing about 3D printers is how well it prints. For that, let's look at these print samples that I printed over a couple of days. First, we have a test cube. This is a test cube that is included on the SD card of the printer. It really did print nicely. It does have one issue with the print and that is the problem that I mentioned previously. Same as with this Benchy. It really looks nice. The details are perfect, overhangs are great, but you can see the line here. The line was of course me over tightening the screw. Next we have this filament or filament astronaut. This print really printed perfectly and it was printed without any support. And while I was already printing stuff with the filament that's called fire engine red, I had to print this small fire engine. Please note that this is a print in place and that the wheels do turn. Next was this Voron filament card and I do print with each of the new materials, I get one of the cards and keep it so I can reference the type of the material and color. Next, two prints had issues and this is when I noticed the problem with the over tightened screw. As you can see, the upper surface was just not good, unfortunately. The problem was that the printer was trying to leave the head but there was binding because of the over tightened screw, so it couldn't lift the head when it wanted and the head scraped on the 3D printed part. But I fixed it and you can see the third print which printed really well. But the biggest test and something I was really shocked to see is how well the printer did print this next piece. It was sliced without any support. And it came out just like this. I would call them perfect prints. They all really do look nice. Although there was one problem because of, yeah, lack of support, one piece didn't print. But everything fits perfectly, it's tight and these two boxes will be used in one of my future projects. Actually videos, the project itself is not mine. Let's make a brief summary. 220 by 220 millimeter bed, direct drive extrusion, auto bed leveling, filament sensor, optical Z switch, almost 200 millimeters per second print speed, PLA, TPU, ABS, wood, PTG, TMC 2208 stepper drivers, 250 degrees centigrade nozzle, and all that packed in just one printer, a longer LK4X. Sure, there are other printers on the market, but will you get this bed size, this print quality for this price? It depends. Buying 3D printers is not easy, it all depends for what you want to use them. For example, if you are into DIY projects such as home assistant or home automation projects, this printer is perfect. As you can see, it printed the perfect case for one of the future projects. It all comes down to price-performance ratio. Don't forget to check out the video description because there you will find links to this printer, link to my previous stream when we did unboxing, assembly and the first print, plus the links to the STL files that I used for testing. And longer, thank you for sending me this printer to be able to test it. I was a bit skeptical at first, but you got me with the print quality. And 
sure, I wouldn't mind if you would be sending me a resin printer to test that one, because if it's good as this one, it will be awesome to play with it. But I also must thank all those wonderful people that are supporting me on the YouTube channel and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But thanks to each and every one of you who has watched, liked or subscribed to my channel. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below or going to the merchandise store, we don't call it merch, we are adults, and buying something there. I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.